Okay, what's the emergency? Oh, who? Oh, Tommy. Some mob thugs said they'd come to take their cut. Said it was a Mr. Farello's money. Oh, I feel like crap. Farelli? Sonny Farelli? Yeah, that's the guy. I think they were very Julie, insistent. Uh, I'm not angry with you. Get him to the hospital. Tommy, rip that guy a new asshole for me. I'm gonna rip him too. Yes, it is. A very long time. Almost as long as this show. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Pressing Issues with me, Maurice Chavez, presiding over some of the least informed debate on the radio. In this episode of Pressing the Issue, we had Alex Shrub, Callum Crayshaw, and John Florida Hickory discussing Satan. I guess you've all got to make up your own minds. Should we be as wet as fish or a corrupt money-grabbing thief? Gentlemen, I feel we really got somewhere and that Vice City and people everywhere know a lot more than they did before we began. And now, to Jonathan and Melissa to talk to you about public radio in your area. You're listening to VCPR, the radio station for disoriented and unrealistic college professors who wear fuzzy sweaters and find everything terribly interesting. I'm Michelle Montanius. And I'm Jonathan Freeloader. Public radio is very important. You may have heard my recent hour-long story about my hike in the park. That was fascinating and very important for everyone, even the blind. Play a selection, Jonathan. I think this is the part where I came to the big tree. I almost felt like I was there. You won't get this kind of nauseating detail on commercial radio. VCPR is 100% commercial free. Absolutely nothing interrupts your enjoyment of our fine programming and ability to tackle the important things like Jonathan's walk in the park. But we need you. Think of yourself as a member of this station, except you aren't allowed in the doors. That's an important metaphor for life. Yes, how wonderful would it be to own an hour of this radio station? We just got an enormous pledge from Farewell Ranch. That's great. Farewell Ranch is a great place to take your loved one. Just dial 866-9-BURY-ME. Remember, VCPR is commercial and interest-free. Donate your money now. Let's get back to pressing issues. Thank you, guys. So. We're back on pressing issues. Just one of many fine shows you'll hear if you have the patience to listen to public radio. Although thanks to the many of Pressing Issues has extended playtime and is the number one rated show in the Vice City area. I'm your very entertaining host, Maris Chavez, a man climbing the broadcasting ladder at a rate of six knots. Six years ago, I was a clown, and now I'm a success. <laughs> Think about it. Imagine where I could be in 10 years. I could achieve anything. Anyway, morality. What is it? Why do we need it? Our ancestors, shortly after discovering fire, built tools to beat each other over the head and discover how to make meat to celebrate with afterwards. Then Columbus came over, shut down the pilgrim discos. Why? All very confusing if you ask me. And you did. And I asked myself, that is a perfect subject for a region-wide discussion show, which is very lucky because I happen to host one. To discuss the subject of morality, we have firebrand preacher Pastor Richards, the head of the Pastor Richards Salvation Statue Organization, a group which plans to raise enough money to build a statue of Pastor Richards himself. We also have John Brown, leader of Moms Against Pop. And finally, we have Barry Stark, author of the book, As Nature Intended. He's the editor of Vice City's Naturist News, and is working feverishly, it says here, to bring more nude recreation to Vice City. To protect the dignity of our other panelists, we place Mr. Barry Stark behind a divider. I'm naked back here. It's my right as a person. <laughs> yes. Let's start with the obvious, yes? 
Is it moral to be naked? Yes. You can't stop me. Well... Tommy, it's Lance. We got big problems. Come down here right away. What's going on? Tommy! Oh, good, good, good. Listen, listen, uh, listen. I like fish. I love fish. I love them as pets in bowls, or as food on a plate. But as much as I love them, I don't want to sleep with them, okay? But right now, your Italian brothers are coming from up there to fit me with some cement shoes, and I... Shut up, Ken! Sit down! Lance, what the hell's going on? It's your friends up north, Tommy. They ain't too happy you kept their man. They're coming down to see the business today. They took longer than I thought. Guys, we gotta make this final. We gotta leave no doubt that this is my operation. Mine! Ken, you get the first one to counterfeit cash and put 20 mil in briefcases. Lance, you get the guys together. Tommy! Why? No big hugs for your old buddy. I've had 15 years out of the loop. I'm a bit rusty <laughs> on family etiquette. Oh, he's angry, huh, Tommy? Didn't I say your temper would get you into trouble, huh? There's three mil in the cases. How many was it? Ten? No, eleven men. That's how you get to be called the Howard Butcher. <laughs> you sent me to kill one man. One man! They hey, knew Tommy, I was coming, son. Tommy! Watch your tone. Anyone would think you blame me for that unfortunate set of circumstances. Just take the money. Get the damn cash. You know, Tommy, I did what I could for you. I pulled strings, called in favors. I was your friend, Tommy. I hoped you'd see sense, see what's good for business. I trusted you, Tommy, and you disappointed me. But at least someone in your chicken shit organization knows how to do business. Isn't that right, Lance? I'm sorry, Tommy. This is Vice City. This is business. <laughs> you sold us out. No. I sold you out, Tommy. I sold you out. The real cash is upstairs in the safe. So, Tommy, what was the big plan? You think I'd just take the fake cash, save face, and run away with my tail between my legs? No. I just wanted to piss you off before I kill you. Damn moron! I don't care, prick! No one to cover your ass now, eh, Tommy? You're going down, you backstabbing prick! Oh, you think so? You double-crossing piece of shit! Your history, Tommy! History! for Lance Vance. I said I had enough of that at school. Pick the wrong side, Lance.
You took 15 years from me, Sonny, and now I'm gonna make you pay! You still don't get it, do you? I own you, Tommy! Those 15 years were mine to spend. Get him, boys, he never has to okay. <laughs> Tommy? Oh my god, Tommy, what, what happened? What does it look like? It looks like you ruined your suit, and Tommy, that was a beautiful suit. Tommy, what on earth happened? Had a disagreement with a business associate. You know how it is. Tommy, I have a disagreement. I send them an angry letter. Maybe I pee in their mailbox. I don't start World War III. You know, maybe you should speak to my shrink. That stupid prick, Lance. Tommy, I never liked that guy, okay? He's neurotic, he's insecure, he's self-centered. The guy's an asshole. I'm glad you took him out. I don't think we're gonna be getting any more heat from up north either. Cause there ain't no up north anymore. It's all down south now. Wait, does that mean what I think it means? Tommy, baby! What do you think it means? That we're in charge. I mean, I mean that you're in charge. Oh, Tommy! You know, Ken, I think this could be the beginning of a beautiful business relationship. After all, you're a conniving, backstabbing, two-bit thief, and I'm a convicted psychotic killer and drug dealer. <laughs> I know. Ain't it just beautiful?
Chris, Pardo. How are you? Right, mate, anyway, thought I had to drop you a line. Oh, my good lord, my son, you will not believe the quality of the brass I just encountered. Streetwalk or something just down in Little Havana, mate. Said her name was Mercedes or something. Oh, my God, mate, you've got to check this bird out. Could strip the lead out of a pencil. Said I was the best you ever had and all. Keep your potato skin for I'll be seeing ya. Tommy, Tomas, it's Cortez, que pasa? Things are interesting. How are you, my friend? I wanted to ask you about Mercedes. Okay, what about her? Oh, Tommy, Tommy, I, I, I hear these stories, all these stories, I don't know what to think. Maybe she thinks she could do what she likes, but Tommy, tell me, is it true? Is what true? These stories I hear. She, she, she really going to be a lawyer. Tommy, the shame, the shame, you know, we Cortez are a proud family. We would never allow a daughter of ours to become a lawyer. Please, tell me it isn't so. I, I don't think I could take it. Oh, Kernan, I can assure you, Mercedes is never going to become a lawyer. Don't worry about it. Oh, thank you, Tommy. Tommy, thank you. The shame would be unbearable. Anyway, Tommy, you must excuse me, all right? The new Minister of Interior has arrived. Many years ago, I killed his father in a failed coup, so I must be polite. Hey, good day, amigo. Tommy Facetti, how's it going, Mr. Big Shot? I hear all these things about you, some kind of player in town now, eh? Paul, you're drunk. No, you stupid player, I ain't drunk. I had a couple and some treats. I ain't been a bit of a couple of days, you know? Anyway, don't give me that, I ain't a mug. Who set you up in this town? Who? Oh, me, that's who. Really? Don't give me that, don't. I introduced you to people, I showed you the ropes. Did a lot of stuff for you, and this is how you repay me. You ignore me. Man. You won't give me a way in, or after all what I did for you. What do you think I am, a dude or something? Paul, take it easy. I've been busy. Don't be an idiot. I ain't no idiot, Moose. That's what I said in Bolstal. You are skip the trouble, son, because you you're going to get it. I never really <laughs> oh, made, please. Rock, man. Use me big hope, please. Don't laugh at me. Uh, Paul, get some sleep, seriously. Listen to this one, man.